Right now at five, a group of friends come together to remember a loved one in a special way. Plus, a local elementary school hosts its annual fall festival to help parents and children connect more with each other. The four states most watched news starts now. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 5 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner. So we do have an alert date today. We've been dealing with uh, strong to severe thunderstorms now for the past couple of days. And unfortunately, we're not done with them yet. Right. In fact, uh, today is probably our greatest severe threat as we head into the afternoon. Absolutely. So Let's we're going to have a lot to keep an eye on, and we're going to get right to what we're expecting. First, of course, we've got to take our tour around the four states. We're going to start with our camera in downtown Pittsburgh, uh, where we have got uh, some rain showers here and there, but uh, otherwise nothing too crazy this morning. We've had some rumbles of thunder, no severe weather this morning in our area. And you can see wet roadways from our camera at 7th and Range Line in Joplin. We'll head down south to the Modoc camera, 20th and range line in Joplin. Again, also wet roadways. We've had scattered showers out there this morning and a couple of thunderstorms. And same from the KDOT camera, 69 East 520th Avenue. Here's Skywatch Storm Tracker. So again, at this point, just scattered showers, a few rumbles of thunder here and there. Not much going on at this point in our area. However, what we're going to be watching is eventually going to be a line of storms that will develop off to our west out of this activity, which I want to drag this down. And you can see we've already got some severe thunderstorm activity down to the southwest of Oklahoma City. This is what's eventually going to fill in and make its way up to us by this afternoon. So at noon, this is what's going to be a little complicated. Scattered storms across the area, but then we start to see that line. So we're around Yates Center just outside of Fredonia Chanute as it starts to roll through. Now the further east it gets as we head through the late afternoon, early evening hours, the more the stronger rather these storms are expected to be and this is where we're really going to have to be watching that severe threat across the region really starting at about noon one o'clock today and it ramps up as we head into the late afternoon early evening so about three four o'clock is when it's going to intensify and that's why our severe threat has been shifted just a little to the south and east. However, it has also been increased. So we now have an enhanced risk for tornadoes, mainly along and south of the I-44 corridor. And those hatch marks there, that indicates the possibility of strong tornadoes. So this is something we've got to watch very, very closely. And we still have the elevated risk outside of that and a low risk just to the northwest of that. Hail, not as big a concern at this point, but a low to elevated risk across the area. And then wind, we have that low to enhanced risk once again with the greatest severe threat again right along and south of the I-44 corridor as we head into the afternoon hours today. So a lot to keep an eye on. Of course, you'll be able to find us uh, any severe weather alerts on KOAM Plus. There are TV app and of course on air and on our YouTube channel. Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty will be here this evening tracking those. 63 in Joplin right now, 62 in Pittsburgh. So as you head out the door again, not a bad start today. Some rain, some thunder out there. Most of us, as you can see, temperatures hanging on low to mid 60s out there. Kids getting on the bus this morning, scattered showers and storms. Low, it's about 62, still gusty winds, non-thunderstorm wind gusts pushing 25. And that'll carry on into the afternoon. Uh, temperatures about 71, thunderstorms when the kids come home. Then that's going to be the other concern is the severe threat really begins ramping up at about this missile time uh, for some areas out there. So again, just keep an eye on the sky, keep an eye on the school information as well in case there's something going on. Maybe they're going to end up holding the kids a little bit. If there's active severe weather, that's what they'll do to keep them safe. So just make sure you're aware of what's happening as we watch these thunderstorms into this afternoon and the evening hours. And again, our highs today, low 70s. We're going to have another look a little more in depth at the timing and the planning for these thunderstorms as we head into the afternoon and evening here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. We have some breaking news this morning. Quincy Jones, a renowned music producer for many icons, has died. Jones's publicist says he died yesterday night, surrounded by family at the age of 91. Now, the longtime producer is best known for his work on Michael Jackson's Thriller album, as well as collaborations with other stars throughout the years, from Frank Sinatra to Ray Charles. His publicist says Jones will be celebrated for the unique life he lived. 
Well, at least six people were hurt as severe thunderstorms and possible tornadoes moved across parts of Oklahoma early Sunday. As you can see some of the damage in Oklahoma City where several homes and structures were hit along with power lines, trees and traffic signals. Now, those injured were hospitalized with non life threatening injuries. About 95,000 customers across the state were without power Sunday morning. City fire crews responded to a number of flooded vehicles and there's heightened concern over the tornado threat this week, given how prolific a year it has been for twisters in the US. Well, first responders on scene at a serious crash Friday night in Newton County. Missouri Highway 43 north of Seneca was closed following the accident. A woman has been reported as deceased after their vehicle burst into flames. She was driving a 2023 Chevy Trailblazer southbound. A female passenger in the car suffered minor injuries. Reports say the, that a northbound Acura SUV crossed the center line and collided with the Chevy SUV. And the Knowles Marshall Office is asking for the public's help regarding a fatal hit and run. Around 6.50 Saturday evening, the Marshall's Office responded to a call to the intersection of South Kings Highway and Hall Ridge Road of a pedestrian who had been possibly hit by a motor vehicle. When deputies arrived, they found the male who was struck by a motor vehicle, but no vehicle was found. Now, first responders began to assess the victim, but he was confirmed deceased. The Knowles Marshall Office is asking that if you have any information regarding the hit and run to contact Marshall's office at 417-223-4318. Well, a tractor trailer crashes into an overpass early Sunday morning in Joplin. The accident happened at the overpass near Glendale Road in I-44. The tractor trailer was traveling westbound on Glendale Road when it tried to go under the 10 foot 8 inch clearance. The driver's height was 13 feet 6 inches and was destroyed as it went under. The bridge itself is not damaged, but the semi is wedged. Glendale Road from the main street to McIndo Park is closed. Now travelers are asked to take the main street to East 44th to Jackson Avenue. The driver was not injured. And to be the first to see breaking news, weather and sports, you can download the KOM News app. It's available free of charge in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Just search for the KOM News app. Friends of a woman who passed away just over a week ago gathered Saturday to honor her memory in a special way. A week ago, Thursday, Abby Zeb, a local runner, was struck in the crosswalk at North Main and Murphy Boulevard. She died of her injuries. Her friends and family joined together Saturday morning in Landreth Park to finish her run from the night she died. Abby was training for the upcoming Tulsa Marathon, and she was about a half mile from home. So her friends gathered to finish her run that evening. You know, finish what you started, and... Um it's just very impactful to do that for Abby, to make sure that that intersection got crossed um, in, her, in her name. She leaves behind her parents and three sons and hundreds of friends in the running community. Services for Abby Zeb are Monday at St. Mary's Catholic Church in Joplin. Well, George Nettles Elementary School hosts its annual fall festival. The festival's goal is to make parents and children connect more with each other and the school. Kids could play carnival games in the hallway and eat pizza in the cafeteria. While adults could participate in a silent auction whose proceeds go to the school. Uh, just that building a better relationship in UST 250, just building that gap between parents, students and kids and all working together. For our community. George Nettles Elementary do get together like this once every month. Well, Pitt State's Hispanic Bandana from performed its first outdoor concert at Pritchett Pavilion in Pittsburgh Sunday. The concert is being held to celebrate Dia de los Muertos, also known as the Day of the Dead, a traditional Latin American holiday that celebrates their family members who have passed on. Uh, we've been trying to share our culture, our roots, and just being able to just connect with uh, the community and that they, they can uh, celebrate with us what we do in our home countries. 
The Day of the Dead also celebrates pets who have passed on as they're a part of the family. And that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes coming up on the KOA Morning News. Pitt State women's basketball looks for its first win of the season. We'll have those details. Plus, the King of Spain was pelted with mud by angry flood crowds due to the government's response to the tsunami-like floods. And we're tracking thunderstorms. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. Pitt State women's basketball opened the season with a loss on Saturday afternoon. The Gorillas look to bounce back on Sunday as they face yet another ranked opponent. Day two of the CCA Women's Tip-Off Classic. Pitt State faces number 22 Southern Nazarene. Early in the first quarter, the bank is open on a Sunday for the transfer from Drake. That's Hannah Niles, uh, Nilgis. A few possessions later. Mill just drains another three. She was six for eight from beyond the arc and scored a team high 20 points. Into the first quarter, Harper Schreiner shoots from the corner, bounces all around the rim, and finally goes in at the buzzer. Pitt State took a 12 point lead into halftime. So we go to the second half, and Sydney Holmes almost loses the basketball, then goes underneath two defenders and somehow makes this basket. So next possession, it's Holmes who sends one home right here. Nothing but net for um, three. Pitt State women's basketball wins its first game of the season. The Gorillas go one and one on the weekend. They're a great team. They all love each other, but like for some reason our energy was just off yesterday. Um, so we talked about it, and I thought the girls did a great job of, um, you know, we just asked them, like, how are we going to respond? And so I thought this was a, a much better effort, energy, ex execution, togetherness, all, that, all those things. Um, but if you can get out of here one and one and just have one under your under your hat, I think it's uh, it's a big deal. Missouri Southern was also in action on Sunday afternoon. Lions faced number five Ashland out of Ohio. Southern fell behind in the first quarter and was unable to come back. Ashland beats MSSU 77 to 44. Ryan Franklin scored 10 points for the Lions in this one. That was the final weekend of the regular season for each of our local women's college soccer teams. Pitt State still has a shot to make the MIAA tournament. Meanwhile, Missouri Southern is looking to finish strong. Missouri Southern playing in their final home game of the year, and they send their seniors out with a win. Southern beats the Newman Jets 1-0. Juliana Reese scored a goal in the 16th minute. That also marks the first conference win of the season for MSSU soccer. Over in Pittsburgh, the Gorillas played against Central Missouri at home. Aviana Gonzalez tied the game within the 51st minute with a goal, but UCM recaptures the lead in the 59th minute. Jennings hang on the win 2-1. to one. Pitt State Soccer will host Missouri Southern this Wednesday in Pittsburgh. That game will start at 2 p.m. Well, so the common new study suggests your success may in life may determine your risk for dementia down the line. Plus... Got an alert day today for strong to severe thunderstorms this afternoon. Another look at that forecast when the KOM Morning News returns. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 518 on this Monday morning. It is an alert day Monday here in the four states for more severe weather across the area. Now this morning, not dealing with that, but we do have scattered showers, even some thunderstorms out there starting on the southwest Missouri side. Again, these are these are very scattered. Honestly, there's big gaps in between like Lamar, for example, you're in between some showers, but to your west in Pittsburgh, to your east toward Greenfield, it's getting rain down by Joplin in another gap out there as well. But again, scattered shower storms out there in the northeastern Oklahoma. Bigger gaps between Bonita and Nawada. And we still have some heavy rain around the Bartlesville area into Washington County and some heavier rain down now to the southwest of Jay into Delaware County and off on the Kansas side. Some moderate rain right around uh, Coffeeville Independence stretching back up just to the west of Fort Scott. And this is just some lighter showers out here rolling into Parsons and getting ready to exit Chinook. So that's how the this morning is going. Take a look at the rain. This is just in the last 24 hours. Look at these rainfall totals. OK, we got some of these blues and purples. So we're talking upwards of 10 inches of rain in parts of northeastern Oklahoma out there. Outside of that, other areas, five to seven inches of rainfall. All of us getting uh, some of this much needed rain. As you know, the drought situation has been severe across the area, and we're now starting to make up for at least a little bit of that rainfall. 
All right, here's the Skywatch Storm Tracker now. So here's what we've got. We're watching this activity now that's down to the southwest and to the west of Oklahoma City. You can see there's two severe thunderstorm warnings. In fact, earlier, if you watch close enough, there was even a brief tornado warning in the southern end of that line. All of this activity will fill in and begin to push into our area as we head into the afternoon hours and bring with it a severe threat. Now, there's a good news, bad news mix here. The good news is the severe threat actually ended up getting scaled a little further to the south and east. Not significant but it got pushed a little further southeast. The bad news is it also got ramped up. So now we have the low to enhanced tornado threat with the greater risk along and south of I-44. And then these hatch marks here, that indicates the possibility of a strong tornado. So that'd be EF2 or stronger. That's something we don't want to see, and that is something that is also relatively unusual for November in the four states. And we can have severe weather, of course, anytime, but such a significant severe risk in the area in November is definitely unusual. So keep your guard up. It may be even November, but don't let it down. A low to elevated hail risk across the area, and we have that low to enhanced wind risk. And again, at this point, the greatest severe threats almost right along into the southeast of the I-44 corridor. However, like we've seen the last couple of days, we'll have scattered showers and thunderstorms storms throughout the day. Now that could play a role in just how intense the storms get later today, but right now we're expecting enough instability and enough shear to be in place that at least some of us are in the gun under the gun for that elevated to enhanced severe risk. By about noon, we start to get some lines of showers and storms rolling to parts of southeast Kansas. The severe threat will actually begin at about noon with the ramping up as we head into the afternoon hour. So by the time kids are getting out of school, Fort Scott, Pittsburgh stretching back down uh, toward Bartlesville, this could be become an issue at dismissal time by five. The rush hour commute. Take a look at this line of storms now rolling through Cherokee County, getting into southwestern Missouri around Joplin, Neosho, Miami, Grove, Vanita. This is where the severe threat really begins to ramp up, so we could have some severe storms ahead of that and around this zone, but it's this line that we're going to be watching very closely as it pushes through the area should be done with the severe threat by 9 10 o'clock at the latest, but we'll still have some lingering showers and storms out there. But again, this is something we've got to keep a very close eye on as we head into the afternoon and evening. Of course, we'll have uh, severe weather updates, KOAM Plus, our YouTube channel, and of course, over the air as well. Doug Hetty will be here later today to track these storms. A few lingering showers as we head into our Tuesday, and then skies will begin to gradually clear out, and we're going to be cooler on our Tuesday as well. We also have flood watches across most of the area. They have varying expiration times for the evening hours, uh, but nonetheless, still, as you saw with those rain totals, flooding a big concern for us today. So again, aside from the thunderstorms and the alert day today, Highs, low 70s, fall back into the 50s. Low 60s tomorrow with those morning showers. Mid 60s on Wednesday. Rain chances return Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Maybe even some thunderstorms will dry out for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Temperatures at or maybe a bit above normal out there. More rain chances by next Wednesday. Let's check your forecast. We're back with Health Watch right after this. Well, topping Health Watch this morning. A new study weighs in on how success may impact your life for dementia later in life. Scientists at University College London say a higher education, a solid professional career and more financial resources will help insulate yourself against later life potential cognitive impairments. The researchers tracked 8400 people 50 and older for a decade, and those with post secondary education were 43% less likely to move into mild cognitive impairments. Now the wealthiest third were 26% less likely to go from mild impairments to dementia and were more likely to recover healthy cognitive states. Scientists say higher education and demanding jobs likely provide more mental stimulation and brain reserve. More wealth also allows for better nutrition and more exercise. Well, a six year old boy with cerebral palsy is learning how to communicate with his friends and family with the help of a computer. McKenna Marks introduces us to Carter and shows us how this technology is changing his life. Go Penguin, go! Okay. Push or drop. There you go. Nice. Carter is just like your typical first grader. He loves video games and is a big WWE fan, as you can see from his Halloween costume. His mom, Lisa, describes him as sweet, funny, and kind. But Carter was born with cerebral palsy. Carter is intellectually aware, but has limited mobility and communication capacity. To help Carter communicate, he is learning to use a brain interface computer. Here's how it works. Push them off. Oh. 
Carter wears a cap that records signals from his brain. He's already set up two commands, one that's neutral and one that's active. The software can read the brain waves and the differences between those two um, activities in his brain. Imagine something that he's physically doing to make an active command. Once the computer program matches Carter's active command, it results in an audio signal. For Carter, you'll get a yes. Am I a food? Yes, yes, yes. Or a no. Am I a dessert? No. It's been a learning process, but Carter's mom says it's been fun to learn about the technology and see her son use it to communicate with others. Nice job. <laughs> this idea that him training and like it reading where on his brain that like the push connects to and then just that stronger connection so then he like can make it do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. He doesn't have to wait for anyone. Speech and language pathologist Sebastian Charbonneau says usually these projects are designed for adults. He tells me it's been fun to see this technology help give voices to children with disabilities. Even if our bodies don't work the way that we want them to do, that that we still have the power to be able to access life in general. As technology continues to progress, Charbonneau says more doors will open for kids like Carter. And Carter's mom, Lisa, says it's been fun to watch her son grow. I just feel like his little butterfly wings and the effect that they're having, is, it's, it's really cool to be a part of it. And that's a look at some of today's top health stories. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. And we are watching scattered showers and storms this morning. A severe threat ramping up by this afternoon. The latest when we come back. Right now at 530, Daughters of the Nile put on a fundraiser to raise money for Shriners Children's Hospital. And we have an alert day today for severe weather likely by this afternoon. Best chances starting afternoon. We'll have a look at that forecast. Get you out the door coming up. Plus, people in Joplin take a polar plunge to raise money for Missouri Special Olympics. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 531. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner. It is, of course, now Monday, November the 4th, 2024. Yes. How about so that? We are, we are already chugging right through. We certainly are. And um, we've had some unusual weather for November. We we've really had uh, have. severe weather. Now, we can have it really any time of sure. the year here. Uh, but for this time of year to have the severe threat we have today is abnormal. very yeah. abnormal for us. And we're going to start first, though, with our tour around the area. A little quick look outside uh, downtown Pittsburgh. Our camera there looks pretty good so far this morning. We are still dealing with scattered showers. Same from our camera at 7th and Range Line in Joplin. Modoc camera 20th and Range Line and wet roadways for sure. And they will remain that way as we head through today uh, with scattered storms continuing even ahead of the severe threat. So let's take a look at Skywatch Storm Tracker. Now, right now, we just have scattered showers and storms. Not everybody necessarily seen rain, but we do still have at least some of that falling. And this has been going on since yesterday evening and probably heard some rumbles of thunder out there last night. What we are going to be watching is activity that is now to the west of Oklahoma City. This is expected to fill in already dealing with some severe uh, thunderstorm warnings out there west of OKC. All of that will eventually fill in and we're going to be contending with that severe threat as we head toward the noon hour. So initially thunderstorms again scattered across the area. I want to emphasize that we'll be dealing with scattered showers and storms throughout the morning and into the afternoon, but the severe threat will start about noon. Now maybe a low end severe risk, maybe some low end severe storms out there around Yates Center, Fredonia, Chanute. But as we head later into the day, here we are at four o'clock, we're starting to see a more organized group of strong to severe thunderstorms out there and then by eight it's on its way out, leaving just scattered showers and storms on the backside of this. However, our severe threat, while it was trimmed up just a little, it was also increased for some of us as well. So along and south of I-44, we now have an enhanced tornado risk and these hatch marks indicating the possibility of a strong tornado, which would be EF2 or greater. So it's, this is a serious event we want to watch very closely. We have a low to elevated hail risk in parts of the area and then same zones that low to uh, the low to enhanced risk for damage 
damaging wind gusts 70 miles an hour or greater. So again, the greater threat is going to be long and south of I-44 as we head into the afternoon and early evening hours. 63 Joplin, 62 in Pittsburgh. Our temperatures this morning as we get this day started, all of us kind of holding out in the low to mid 60s around the region. When kids get on the bus this morning, again, some scattered showers, thunderstorms out there, low 60s, winds, non-thunderstorm winds gusting to 25. That's the other side of our story. It's been breezy the last few days and will be today. And then scattered storms when that bus brings them home. Some of those could be severe, so definitely keep an eye to the sky. About 71 highs today, low 70s, scattered storms throughout the day, and then our severe threat again ramping up as we head into the afternoon and early evening. We're going to take a more in-depth look at these thunderstorm chances and break down the timing for you here in just a few more minutes. Elise? All right, thanks, Chris. Well, the Daughters of the Nile held a craft fair fundraiser Saturday at the Mayor's Shrine in Pittsburgh. Now, the proceeds from the fundraiser go to the Shriners Children's Hospitals. 25 vendors participated in the fair, each putting an item up for auction. Auction prizes included a quilt, skin care supplies, spices, and more. The Shrines, are, they have a uh, Shrine Hospitals for Children. We take care of children with burns. We take care of children with cleft lip, cleft palate, any facial or head injuries. We take care of orthopedics. We take care of even sports injuries, and the Shriners take care of the children, their full bill. We do take insurance, but the families pay nothing on the bill. The Shriners pay for everything to take care of the children. The Daughters of the Nile were hoping to raise over $1,000 for the hospitals. Well, with the Christmas season approaching quick, people in Pittsburgh's Drag the Gut community came together to gather toys for less fortunate kids. The event occurs annually, and this year is the 40th anniversary of the toy donations. We're getting toys for the poor kids from Crawford County. You know, Crawford County happens to be the poorest county in the state. And we take them to the Salvation Army, and every year we've been doing this. I have not missed the one since it started. Now, instead of the 15 motorcycles that started it all 40 years ago, hundreds of them swarmed the parking lot between Applebee's and Verizon, collecting unopened toys to be delivered to kids in need throughout the holiday season. The Sacred Heart Catholic Church invited all members of the community into their parish for a complimentary turkey dinner. With 70 years of serving these dinners under the church's belt, the goal is to give people a place to gather before the busy holiday season arrives. Now, the meal at Saturday's gathering consisted of turkey, green beans, stuffing, mashed potatoes, and more. A representative from the church said that they cooked about 100 turkeys and serve upwards of 2,000 dinners per year. We have people who come here and this is their annual time to get together and visit. They don't, they're busy going to their church on Sunday. Well, this is their opportunity to come and see some of the other people that they haven't regularly. And we will have people from all over the, all over the, the county and even some over in Pittsburgh and uh, down in Arkansas. Come. The turkey dinner was a two day event. The annual polar plunge for the Special Olympics of Missouri took place at Rivers Bend Family Resort in Joplin. Last year, the event raised $10,640, and this year, they're shooting for even more. Local sponsors and organizations also formed teams to take the plunge together, like Kansas City University and General Mills. All of the people that come out every year, um, they make it an annual uh, uh, an, an annual to do on their list um, because they just really love the the organization. They love the cause to support local Special Olympics athletes. The Missouri Southern softball team helped manage the event. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOA Morning News. Rescue crews work to save survivors of a deadly roof collapse at a railway station in Serbia. Plus, a warming climate is causing extreme storms to happen more frequent around the world. We'll have the latest. You're watching the KOM Morning News. Topping World Watch. Rescue crews are at the scene of a deadly roof collapse at a railway station in Serbia. At least 11 people were killed when a concrete roof above the entrance to the building suddenly fell to the ground. Three others were hospitalized with serious injuries. Ambulance crews and other emergency crews used bulldozers to remove debris as they looked for survivors. The building was reportedly recently renovated. An investigation is underway to figure out what happened. 
an enraged crowd of flood survivors throw mud at the King of Spain and other top government officials. During a visit to the epicenter of the nation's worst natural disaster in recent history, the Prime Minister, Queen Letizia, and the regional Valencia president also visiting the site. Police were forced to step in as the crowd was shouting insults and hurling mud at them. Local residents are angry with the government's response to the tsunami-like floods, as mostly residents and thousands of volunteers have been forced to step up and help. Now, at least 200 people are confirmed dead and thousands have been affected. Now, while weather can be unpredictable, extreme and deadly storms are shaping up to slam communities around the world more frequently. That's the message from scientists who have been analyzing the influence of human caused climate change. Ted Lindner investigates. The effects of human-caused climate change are giving new meaning to the saying, when it rains, it pours. In the wake of recent catastrophic flooding events in the U.S. and around the world, scientists say this destruction could become more frequent in the future. According to Andrew Winters of the University of Colorado Boulder, climate change is setting the stage for weather patterns like rainstorms to become more extreme. Well, the baseline patterns and processes are still the same to produce these extreme events. You're basically supercharging the environments that allow them to occur so that you can take a previous event that happened in, in, a, in a former climate and make it more likely or more dramatic than it might have been without human-caused climate change. These warnings come as eastern portions of Spain are still in critical condition. This after communities last week were pelted with about one year's worth of rain in just eight hours. More than 200 people have been reported killed so far. Extraordinarily amounts of precipitation. Here in the States, recovery also continues across North Carolina communities decimated by Hurricane Helene, which also unleashed critical flooding. The amount of precipitation that occurred in North Carolina was so far outside the bounds of what anyone had experienced. Meanwhile, the findings of a recent United Nations report are spelling trouble. Officials say the globe is on track for significantly more warming unless world powers dramatically curb fossil fuel use and production. This report shows annual greenhouse gas emissions at an all-time high, rising 1.3% last year. They must fall 9% each year to 2030 to limit global temperature rise. And that's a look at some of your biggest headlines from around the world. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 545 now on this Monday morning. It is an alert day here in the four states as we are anticipating severe weather as we head into the afternoon. Now, right now, Skywatch Storm Tracker, we've got gets, we've got scattered showers and thunderstorms out there, but nothing strong, nothing severe at this point. So heading on to the Missouri side, we've got some rain now from Joplin to Neosho, Carthage, just outside of Mount Vernon, Greenfield, Stockton. And that stretches back down into northeastern Oklahoma, so around the Grove area, some moderate rainfall from Grove to Jay, back to the south south and west. We got little spotty showers here between Benita and Nawada, and then we get to Bartlesville, and we've got additional showers and storms, those stretching, stretching back down to Skyatook and down to the south and west. And then in Kansas, a little drier, but still some showers out there from Mound City, stretching back down toward Independence and Coffeeville. Again, nothing too strong, nothing too heavy out there, but at least some additional rainfall is falling. We've also had a lot of it. This is just the last 24 hours. These spots here in parts of Nevada counties, yeah, this is uh, ranging up to 10 inches of rain in the last 24 hours on radar estimates. Uh, anywhere from, say again, 1 to 10 inches of rain. Many of us, uh, 5, even 7 inches. So a lot of rain has fallen, and we do have flood watches, which we'll talk about. Here's what we're keeping an eye on is this activity off to the west of Oklahoma City. Now this is going to work its way up to our area as we head through the morning into the afternoon. That's going to bring us an opportunity for additional strong to severe thunderstorms and we're looking at an unfortunate increase in severe weather chances. So here's what's changed since yesterday. The severe threat got narrowed back a little bit to the south and east, not significantly, but a little. Unfortunately, it also got increased for some of us as well. Really, the greatest threat 
for the most significant severe weather is along and south of the Interstate 44 corridor. Here on the tornado risk map, we have a low, elevated, and enhanced risk. And then these hatch marks that you're seeing are indicating the possibility of a strong tornado. That would be EF2 or greater. It's not to say it will happen, but it's saying that the conditions are right, which is just out of this world for November. We can have severe weather, of course, anytime, but these are some unusual high-end risks for severe weather. Low to elevated hail risk across the area. That's not our major concern at this point. And then we have the wind. So non we have non-thunderstorm wind gusts today like we've seen, but then we have a low to enhanced risk for damaging straight line winds of 70 miles an hour or greater. And then all of this is going to start to come together around the noon hour. So initially we have showers, thunderstorms. They're still going to be scattered through the morning across the entire region. We're going to be dealing with them like we have the last couple of days, scattered through the day. But we'll start to get some stronger storms by noon around the 8th Center, Chinook, Fredonia areas, and that'll continue to push off to the east. Now here's the other concern. Is we could have ongoing or intensifying severe weather by the time a lot of schools are letting out. This is where the greater concern is, is along the 69 corridor and then stretching southwest towards Bartlesville. So as you go to get the kids, it is very imperative that you're monitoring school information. If they send out alerts that they're keeping the kids in shelters and you need to be watching for watches and warnings yourself if you're heading out to pick up the kids or waiting at the bus stop because this is severe weather we don't want to mess with. Unfortunately, it could intensify and it could intensify quickly. By five, we are dealing with the biggest uptick. The severe weather will really ramp up after about three o'clock. By five, as it pushes into southwest Missouri, that's where our greatest and highest risk for severe thunderstorms will be. Then by eight, we are left on the backside with scattered showers and storms, a few isolated showers overnight, uh, maybe a rumble of thunder toward tomorrow morning. And then we'll start to clear out on our Tuesday briefly, and we're going to be cooler. As for today, again, alert day today, severe thunderstorms this afternoon, low 70s, low 60s tomorrow, so considerably cooler, mid 60s Wednesday, more rain Thursday through Saturday, a break in the rain Sunday through Tuesday of next week, more showers by next Wednesday. That is a check of your forecast. We'll be back with more right after this. Well, an ultra rare coin just nabbed a history making sum at auction and not for what it has, but for what it doesn't have. Jeremy Roth explains in today's take a look at this. Take a look at an ultra rare dime that just sold for half a million dollars. Let me explain. Normally, the ubiquitous 10 cent piece is, well, a dime a dozen, so to speak, nothing special. But according to auction house Great Collections, this 1975 dime is a very rare exception indeed. Why? Because of this, the absence of a tiny letter S that adorns all dimes struck at the U.S. Proof Mint in San Francisco. See, there it is, right there. Great Collections says the S-less dime is infinitely rarer with this error. It's certainly more interesting, or should I say interet ting <laughs> In fact, it's one of only two examples known to exist and was purchased by an Ohio family in 1978 and held for almost 50 years before being consigned and garnering more than 200 bids, ultimately selling for a record setting 506,000 and change. <laughs> See what I did there? Speaking of rare and interesting, take a look at a kooky contraption from a bygone era that is mystifying historical experts in Maryland. The Dorchester County Historical Society says the odd automated mystery machine was found in their storage room and has been confounding experts ever since. They simply don't know what it is, but they do have a prevailing theory. We potentially think it is a Maryland beaten biscuit maker. The belief is that this would have helped beat the air out of the dough as the biscuits were being created. Questions still abound and the society has taken to social media for answers, asking the public what this thing could be. Half-baked beaten biscuit maker or something even neater? <laughs> Bread puns, people, come on, for real dough. All right, forget it. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. We'll be right back. Well, a 40-year-old global smash song and dance lives again to shake off the foulest stench and funk of 40,000 years. A thriller flash mob of hundreds gathered in Santiago, Chile Saturday, where boys and girls danced to the beats and choreography of the late king of pop, Michael Jackson. Now, the event was organized through social media and featured Jackson impersonator Pedro Sagredo. Some fans were dressed up in costumes that also let them celebrate the annual Day of the Dead culture celebration. 
and it's a day you can indulge your sweet tooth in. Today is National Candy Day. Now, the word candy covers a lot of territory, but includes chocolate bars, gumdrops, and suckers. And candy was first made from honey and was once thought to calm the digestive system and cure a sore throat. Candies have since made many advances with the improved availability of sugar. You could celebrate the day by enjoying some of that leftover Halloween candy. I certainly will be enjoying the kids leftover Halloween candy. They don't need that much. We do, though. We need the energy. We need the sugar. And you're definitely going to need some energy uh, to be contending with what we've got today. We have an alert day today. Severe weather expected as we head into the afternoon and evening hours across the area. In between here and there, though, we'll still have those scattered showers and thunderstorms. Not anticipating any severe weather prior to the noon hour. And temperatures just kind of hovering in the low 60s. We'll also have non-thunderstorm wind gusts pushing 25, 30 miles an hour. As we end of the afternoon. This is where the timing gets a little more difficult, but after 12 p.m. we're going to start to see the severe threat gradually increasing and by about 3 or 4 is when it's going to really start to ramp up really along the 69 corridor as a line of storms is expected to push to the east. We're going to go low 70s uh, for our highs today. Thunderstorms will be wrapping up the severe threat rather will be wrapping up about 8 and then we'll have additional scattered uh, showers and storms overnight tonight falling back into the low to mid 50s. And we'll have a few morning showers for our Tuesday, then partly cloudy, cooler, low 60s, more rain as we head into the upcoming weekend. We'll be right back with more of the KOAM Morning News and another look at those severe weather chances right after this.